Welcome to the channel, welcome to this video where we're going to be hooking up an electronic boost controller on a car. Electronic boost controllers allow you to run more boost than your wastegate normally would allow, and they also allow you to set up your car to spool your turbo faster, which means you'll be making more power sooner in your power band. Without further ado, let's jump right into it and go over how to hook up an electronic boost controller on a Speedwino ECU, which also applies to Mega Squirt ECUs. The boost controller that I am installing in this video is this three port Mac valve. These are extremely popular because they work well and they're easy to set up. If you want to get this exact boost controller, I have it linked down in the description. Now let's go over how to actually set it up, make it work so you could get those big power gains and big spool up gains. All right, so the first thing that you might have to do is set up your ECU to send the signal to control that boost control valve to your car. Now, this right here is a Speedwino V1.2 board, and on it, there's this area over here, and you could see that boost pin right there that has nothing in it. So what we need to do is wire in a wire into that pin, and then jump that wire to one of the unused pins that goes out to the car's harness. Ideally, this could be something like a removed accessory, a pin that's not used because you don't have an accessory on there, or something that really just isn't that important. So on my car, I'm using the purge valve pin because that is unused with this aftermarket ECU and that's what I'm going to be wiring this up to. So I'm going to wire mine on the back of the board because it will look a little bit cleaner so I'm going to pay attention to where that boost control area is right there. Flip this over and I could tell that it's that second pin in right there and that's where we're going to be putting our jumper wire. So I have my wire prepared here. We're just going to put this down in this hole Heat that up there, get some solder on it, and then we should be good to go here. Now you'll probably note that I am not an expert solderer, and there probably is a better way to do this, but I think that's going to work pretty well. If we give this a tug, that wire's on there, and we're making good connection, so that's good. You want to make sure that you don't jump across areas to wire in here because then you're not going to get a good signal and you'll start to have problems. Also, don't put too much heat into your board because then you could also have problems. I did go back on top of the board there and just add a little bit more solder. And for someone who's not really too experienced with this stuff, I'm pretty happy with that result. All right, so here's the back of the board. We're going to run this wire from here over to that front pin there, which is the bottom pin, one in from the side, which based on the wiring diagram that I have over here is the one that we're going to be going to. All right, so here is that jumper all in place. Now it's time to put this ECU back together, get it in the car, and see if our solenoid fires. Now, we need to set up the solenoid in the car before we could test that, so I will jump to that right now. All right, so in your engine bay, you will need a place to get your boost control valve 12 volt power and a signal. In a Miata, there is what's called a purge valve solenoid, and a lot of people use this wire right here to power their boost control. This has 12 volt power and a wire that goes to the ECU, which is why people use this thing. If you want to do it the right way, you could get a connector to go in there. Since I don't have one, I'm going to snip this and put on my own spade terminals, and then we'll wire that thing up. All right, so right now I have my spade terminals coming off of that purge valve connector, and then I also put spade terminals on my boost controller here. Now, this does not have polarity, so you could wire it either way, so either one of these wires could go to either one of those connectors right there. All right, so now we have our boost controller all hooked up here. I'm gonna go over what is done to make sure that this thing works. So the first thing to do is to run wires from your 12 volt and your signal over to the boost controller. Now, this boost controller is not in its permanent location on my car, it's just sort of floating here, but basically you need that all wired in like that. It's just two wires, again, they don't have polarity, so you could put them either way. Then you need to go ahead and hook up your vacuum line. This intercepts the vacuum line to your waste and that's how that boost controller works. So you need one line running off of your signal, which will be your intercooler piping or your compressor housing there, into port three on the boost controller there. You could see that there, so that's gonna run straight off of there into the front of this valve. Then you need to run another line out of port two, which is on this side here, over to your wastegate actuator. The third port on a single port wastegate like that is just vented to atmosphere. I would highly recommend mounting 
that thing somewhere that's less hot and less prone to flapping around, like somewhere over here on your engine bay, or depending on your car, just somewhere that's out of the heat and out of vibration. Just make a little bracket and mount it up. But for now, I got that on there just to test it out, and it did work pretty well. Now that that thing's all hooked up and wired in on the car, I'll show you what you need to do in your software to set up this boost controller so you could actually use it. All right, so here we are in Tuner Studio. This is where we're gonna set up our boost control settings on a Mega Squirt or on a Speedwino ECU. Now it's gonna be pretty similar between these with little differences, so just sort of use what you see here and adapt that towards your ECU. Different firmwares have different settings, different ECUs have slightly different settings, but it's all the same basic idea. So on my version here, we're gonna go under accessories and we're gonna go down to boost control. Then we're going to turn this boost control enabled to on. This will arm the boost controller and allow you to start tuning it. I will note that after you hit burn with these settings, you will need to do a full power cycle with the ECU before your boost controller starts to work. So turn that to on. Then you could choose your boost controller type. Open loop will basically tell the boost controller what to do regardless of what boost your car is actually hitting. Closed loop will use the map sensor and the boost level that your car is at and adapt the boost controller to hit and maintain those boost levels. Open loop is simpler to set up. Closed loop should be more effective if you do it right. For right now, I'm just gonna show you open loop. This is not really a tuning video. If you wanna learn how to tune this, I could do a much more in-depth video, but this is gonna be the basics. Then you'll need to go ahead and type in your boost controller frequency. With these Mac valves, around 30 to 33 is what most people are running on Miatas. If that doesn't work for you, do a little bit more research and another number should work. But for me, that 32 number is working really well. A very important thing that you need to do while you're tuning boost is set up a boost cut. So all you need to do is go ahead and turn that on and set a boost limit. Now this is a target boost level that if you hit it, it's gonna cut your engine. Now you wanna do this because while you're setting up a boost controller, you could accidentally run too much boost into your engine and cause some major, major problems. So set this up about, I don't know, one or two PSI higher than what you're trying to run on your car. And this will limit your car if you pass that boost level that you're trying to get to. Then you could go ahead and press burn once you get all these settings set up. Before I close this though, I do just wanna quickly show you if you use open loop, there's gonna be more settings that you're gonna to have to dial in, but once again, you could research this and there are other videos that will show you how to tune this. And if you want me to make a video, let me know and I'll make it happen. Once you have those settings set up there, you need to set up your boost table. Once again, this isn't a tuning video, but just to show you the basics, if you're in open loop tuning, you're gonna be putting in the duty cycle of the boost controller. Now, the lower the number, the less that the boost controller is gonna do. The higher the number, the more the boost controller is gonna do. So to promote faster spool up, you'll wanna run high duty cycles for low RPM. Say the boost controller is all the way shut for up until 3000 RPM here. That means that up until 3000 RPM, your wastegate is not gonna have opened at all. After that, it's just gonna function as normal. Now, if you wanna run a boost controller to raise your boost and not just spool the turbo quicker, you could put in some sort of duty cycle here in the higher RPM. Now, that will hold your wastegate shut more than if there was no boost controller, but it won't hold it all the way shut. You'll need to fine tune this to set up your boost profile for your car. For closed loop, you're typing in the boost level that you wanna hit here and the ECU will try to target that. Again, that could be for another video though. And with that, that's all the basic settings to set up your boost controller in this software. Now we can show you a few results and then wrap up this video. So now let's look at some results from this drive. So this is a data log that I was taking while I was driving. And the important things that we wanna look at here are the map, which is the red line there, and the RPM, which is that white line. So right here, we have our first pull. This is a second gear pull started right around 3,500 RPM or so. And as you can see, I'm full throttle and we get right up to around 160 KPA consistently through the rest of the pull. 
Now, the important thing to look at is where we hit that target boost level. It looks like we're right around 158 KPA, right around 4,600 RPM. So remember that. 158 KPA, 4,600 RPM. Now let's take a look at a pull with the boost controller set up. So here is another curve with that boost controller hooked up. And here I had it set up to keep the waste gate closed at low RPM and then slowly open up at the higher RPM. So you can see this is a slightly different curve here. And if you look, we hit that 158 at our manifold right around 4,000, just a little bit under actually. We're probably there right at the top end of the 3,000. So that was about 6,000 RPM less that we were hitting our target boost. I also had the duty cycle a little bit on right there, so you can see we're just a tiny bit higher boost through this curve right there, through that pull, but it's not a huge difference. I could turn up the duty cycle to run more boost, but to me, the most impressive thing is that spool up time. So right here on this pull, I was able to speed up my spool up to that 9, 10 PSI range by about 600 RPM. Now that's a lot of usable power there. Also, it's important to note that this is not a dialed in boost table. This was sort of numbers just thrown together and that I was able to improve this even more after taking these data logs. All right, guys, so installing that boost controller was a big success. This thing is spooling the turbo much faster than before, almost a thousand RPM sooner to hit 10 PSI, which is huge for making consistent and usable power. So if you enjoyed this video and you wanna support the channel, you could go ahead over to my Patreon. I post all my videos videos early there, as well as some sneak previews that you don't see here. You also could check out these MX-5 shirts, which I have listed on my Etsy shop in the description. And the most basic thing that you could do is like this video and comment down below that it helped you out. Comment what car you're installing this thing on, and that will help this channel grow. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I hope you stick around for the next one. Take care. <laughs>